Now, I told you I had a cool idea for this episode, yes. right? And I'm, I'm sure you watched. I'm sure you watched my last episode, so you know I was I looking. Did. At, you know I'm, I was what I was looking at. I settled on. Oh. I oh my. On, I settled on some new star decks. We've got some red. <laughs> All right, ladies and gents. We know what we got to do here. Uh, we need to turn this definitively into an Imperial Dramon deck. Uh, and specifically, I got to do that because between the bans and the fact that I just I haven't pulled any all force support, uh, the deck is not going to survive if I keep splitting it between the two lines. So realistically, what I need to do from this point out is start chasing Imperial Dramon Dragon modes, uh, hopefully get another fighter mode as well, and basically rebuild the top end around that. We're working with a lot of Vmons in the base here. We've got Davis, all the other stuff. So yeah, we just need another dragon mode or two, one more fighter mode, and then really the deck's pretty much good to go. Paladin mode would be great. Uh, but in the search for another dragon mode, we obviously don't have access to the starter decks. It's just, it's not time. Pete and I agreed, not yet. So uh, I actually looked at my old box of classic collection over here and I realized that I actually have, if I count this right, yeah, I actually have 11 packs left. So <laughs> for the rules of the series, my budget will get me eight, and then I get three victory packs since I did beat Pete last week with Ragna Lordmon, which is just, that happened. <laughs> so hopefully what I can get out of here is a few more of the Imperial Dramon pieces. Uh, so Pyle Dramon, Dino Vmon, uh, another Vmon would be great. We have enough X Vmon, so we're super. Uh, but of course, there's also the Imperial Dramon Dragon mode that comes in here, which is a three Evo, which makes quite a difference, uh, especially in a sealed format like this with all of our memory tamers and all that. So hopefully I can pull that. Uh, and really, it's just we can be done with uh, Classic Collection after this. So let's make two cute little piles, I guess, here. And we'll just dive in and hope, hope to the heavens to RN Jesus, whoever, that we can pull that Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode. All right, Tento, Gardro, Tapirmon, Stingmon, uh, one more could not hurt. Pixie up there, Metal Mame, Wizardmon, Piedmon, Edamon, Plesiomon, no. All right, we are not off to a good start, but we, uh, I'm pretty sure we have a playset of that Stingmon if we really want to lean into the green side of things. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess that's that is a route. If we uh, if we had pulled the virus Imperial Dramon out of 1.5, I think that would have been great. But you know, uh, all right. And I think I saw something shiny poking out of the back there. Did I mangle it? No. Oh, thank God. You know how I am with my packs. Stingmon, Andromon, Devimon, Hegadramon, Togemon. Oh my God. Whatever it is keeps poking out. Ikakumon, Alekmon. Lady Devimon, Metal Edamon, Patamon, Ogremon, and... Yo! <laughs> Machine Dramon alternate art. This is an $80 card. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, I've, I have so... I, I didn't mangle that, right? Oh my goodness. No, it's in, it's in flawless condition. Okay, wow. Uh, that's going in the sleeve right away. <laughs> It's just off to the side somewhere here. <laughs> wow. Uh, I was hoping to pull one, actually. It's, it's great to, you know, have access to the set here, but oh my goodness, what a what a gorgeous card. <sighs> I've actually been trying to build Machine Dramon recently, so I'm, I'm happy to see it, but I'm also not because <laughs> that card is too gorgeous to play. That I definitely mangled, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're Gururumon, Tentomon, Gardromon. Well, lots of Machine Dramon support now. Another XVmon, great. Demi V, Hagurumon, Greymon, Myotismon, Boltmon, Pyldramon, and uh, Seraphimon, whatever. This is good. Uh, I was looking for this piece because it re stands on Digivolve if a free is underneath. So if it goes over either Stingmon or XVmon, then it can re-stand, you know, basically we can swing with jamming and then leave something unsuspended so Pete cannot swing over it or bounce it, more importantly, with uh, Electroshocker, which is fantastic. So, uh, set's being pretty good to me so far, actually. I have to say, the first pack was a bit of a bummer, but uh, otherwise, we're looking good. Oh, fighter mode, don't go, don't go slipping off the mortal coil. <laughs> Yukakumon, Demi Devimon, Phoenixmon, eight, we got another Dino B, that is great. Another Boltmon, another Pyildramon, and 
Mega Kabuterimon. Shout out to Pete. Okay, no, this is really good. I think we've more or less filled out our ultimate lineup here, uh, which is just absolutely fantastic. That is great. So uh, we might even potentially be able to replace all of the uh, Aerovidramons, <laughs> which are severely limited at this point, uh, and basically just, uh, yeah, you know, have a much more consistent way to our top end now. Emergency program shutdown and a Kuwagamon. Oosh. Lots of stuff for Pete in here. Lots of stuff. Uh, actually, if he's been pulling uh, EX1, he would do well maybe to incorporate the emergency program shutdown because he can stop me and my option cards, all my hammer sparks and all that fun stuff with it. Baptism by fire and oh, tell me I didn't mangle that. Oh, an alt art war Greymon. That is really nice. That is, uh, <laughs> that is a valuable card as well. Oh my God. I, I gotta be like extra careful with these packs here. There's... There's just so much value in this. I think uh, there's some Black Friday sales going on too for for classic collection in my area. So like I really, oh, I gotta be so careful. I gotta pick up more boxes of this and just open it up. Cause like these alties are great by fighter mode. <laughs> Pulling plenty of machine drum on support now that I've seen it. That's great. Plessio, Rose, Skull Greymon. Hey, there we go. There's my boy. There's my boy. Okay, let's stop and take a look at that quickly. So, three to evolve on a blue or a green, great. When digivolving, if a Digimon with free in its traits is in its Digivolution cards, I can unsuspend this Digimon and suspend one of my opponent's Digimon. And then for each uh, color in its Digivolution sources, it gets plus 1000 DP on my turn. So if I got the blue and green, basically he goes up to 13K, I can suspend Pete's guys and then swing over them. I can also aggro with uh, Pyodramon and then basically, you know, just swing, 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 which more or less recreates what All Force was doing for us early in the series. So that that is fantastic. The rest of this can be literally anything and I will be satisfied at this point. Uh, and I think there is something really nice hiding back there. So we're about to find out. Let's see Oman. <laughs> okay, yeah, we definitely have enough level fives at this point. Ah, just another ice wall. Okay, whatever. <laughs> That's like three ice walls now, three or four that we've uh, that we've pulled. I almost wish it wasn't limited because I would just be spamming ice wall every week <laughs> until Pete surrendered. I have no shame. I'll play like that. I'd do it if I could. <laughs> all right, let's see. Kakumon, Togemon, Mega Dramon. Oh, jo all the Machine Dramon support now. Uh, Kabuterimon, shout out Pete, Gabumon, Lady Devimon, fight for your pride and ultimate connection. Okay, well, yeah, we're definitely, <laughs> we're definitely playing Machine Dramon. <laughs> to locals, I mean, not, not, not to here. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is amazing. I did not expect the set to be so good to me in the last couple packs. That, that is just, it's very motivating, you know? More Machine Dramons for A, hey, all the XV Mons in the world that we need. Gurumon. <laughs> Dramon, it is super rare. Engine Woman. All right. Why not? Oh, yes. Guys, we have a deck. We have a deck now. <laughs> three of these. I thought I'd maybe get one by the time I got through that box, but three? Oh my goodness. That is a that is just amazing. Yeah. Bye-bye, Aero V Dramon. I don't need you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. We got Tapirmon, Metal Tyranno, Tentomon, shout out to Pete, the Wizard, Palmon. I th I, could you, do you remember when I thought I was going to need this card? Like this card was going to solve all of my problems? Good times. <laughs> Rosemon, Bergermon, uh, Edamon, hey, another Vmon, and more Machine Dramon support. Actually was going to have to buy that uh, <laughs> for Black Friday, but oh my goodness. Guys, guys. <sighs> We're making this happen. Like, look look at all of this. Look at all of this Imperial support. I mean, like, that that's the winner. That's the takeaway from this. But these guys, oh my goodness. The, the deck just totally changes. Getting access to this Vmon as well is just fantastic. I I am over the moon right now. I mean, these pulls too. Uh, the Angel Woman, I don't really care about that much. But like, these two over here, holy cow. Guys, we are in such good shape uh, with, you know, Davis is limited to three, unfortunately, uh, the sins of Ragnalordmon, but you know, we three Davis is still more than enough to, to get mileage out of all these blues and greens and everything else. It's just, it's going to be an Imperial Dramon world from here on out, guys. Uh, we'll still need to, you know, use all force uh, because we only have, what, one and then now two dragon modes, but... 
Oh, all right. All right, enough of this. I got to sleeve these up before uh, they get exposed to the air any further. And then obviously I got to find out uh, just how I'm going to incorporate all of these beauties into my deck. So uh, yeah, guys, wow, there we go. <laughs> Finishing off uh, Classic Collection in style. So I'm going to jump on over into the deck tech and we'll see what we're working with this week, okay? Well, this is finally starting to look like an Imperial Dramon deck, but thanks to some should we say major holes in the overall blueprint, I have had to make some interesting substitutions for the time being. Now, I am happy that we can finally start playing Stingmon. It's not the Stingmon I really want to play, but it's the Stingmon that I can play right now. But hey, piercing is nice for some board control, and passing it on as an inheritable is really nice too. Ikakumon makes a return to ensure that alongside Stingmon, I can almost always answer Pete's hard drop rookies. And, you know, it's not much else that makes sense in this slot. As for our level 5 lineup, that is looking pretty solid now. Paledramon from EX1 gives us the ability to aggro and then unsuspend, and it makes Imperial Dramon unblockable as well which allows for some pretty devastating double swings when placed under fighter mode. Pale Dramon from set 1.5 is also nice because jamming allows us to start swinging a lot earlier, and it has an inheritable that allows Imperial Dramon to unsuspend on attack. This is pretty devastating when you consider the fact that fighter mode can already swing twice, or that the dragon mode from set 1.5 can unsuspend itself after the jamming pile Dramon has already swung, and then you can just unsuspend one more time. So three checks in total. Not bad. And then there's the Dino Beamon from EX1, which is a nice way to catch champions and rookies unaware, and it does reward my Megas for swinging over things too with a little bit of memory gain. Now, I did lean into Dino Beamon a bit heavier in this particular build because I'm actually going to try and run a more green heavy top end at least until I can score a few more Imperial Dramons and, you know, ha have this actually look like an Imperial Dramon deck proper. So first of these green inclusions is Grand Kuagamon, which actually has the free attribute, so it does have some limited <laughs> synergy with the Imperial Dramon line. This is here primarily to swing over Pete's Hercules Kabuterimon, and with some help from the starter deck Demi Vmon and Gabumon, I can even punch over Susanomon and Death Xmon. It is a little expensive with the 4 Evo though, so I'm not sure how much this is actually going to come up. Next, we have Shivamon, who makes a lot more sense to me than it should. When all of my Digimon are suspended, Pete is locked out of option cards. And then, when Shivamon unsuspends at the start of my turn, I can burn one of Pete's security. So yeah, I kind of think that's worth it, considering the fact that Electroshocker has been the bane of my existence. And hey, you know, we did pull one more Imperial Dramon, so we're throwing in this classy fellow from EX1. It's mostly there for the extra swing, but you know, it could let us clear a weak stack if Pete has one, and you know, assuming that we have uh, a free in the sources, which shouldn't be too much of a problem. On the option side, I am very excited to finally include Hidden Potential Discovered. This will let me cheat out my evolutions, and most importantly, it can give me a free Shivamon, which seems pretty wombo combo fantastic to me. And I'm actually going to splash in Positron Laser, funny enough, because it's the only removal I have currently <laughs> that can clear anything above level 6. It is super situational, it needs the blue body on board to actually get the bounce, but it's the best I can manage for now. Mega Death, this is not. Oh, and Ken is back because I really just need to see a memory tamer as soon as possible. And yes, I'm willing to risk the extra count for Death Xmon because I also need a green source for some of my combo plays now. And that's really it. The deck is a pale <laughs> imitation of Imperial Dramon, and I'm playing so much green that I feel like I've kind of turned into Pete. But you know, um, he saw something in the bugs, so maybe there's something to them after all. Now, let's jump into a game and see if we can give Pete a taste of his own medicine and edge one step closer to taking the series. Game 1 starts off with a bit of a lull. 
Now that I have my full suite of XV Mons, it's not really that hard to prep one in the raising area in anticipation of some fun jamming shenanigans. Pete, however, has a surprise for me. He flips over a Gigimon egg, and at that point I realize that he's effectively pulled a Kevin and thrown my entire deck building strategy for a loop while he was at it. So not sure what to do, I basically just start chipping away at Pete's security until he's able to get a girthy blocker in my way, and it's a familiar face in Volcanomon. But at that point I do have a Dino Beamon in the back, and a little bit of spice on hand. So with just two security left, Pete does refuse to allow another jamming strike through, fair enough, so he does block, deleting my XV Mon. And you know, uh, that was totally a trap, Pete took the bait, and now I can hammer spark up and go into Shiva Mon, keeping turn and allowing me to swing over his Volcano Mon stack. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, we, we got some bugs of our own. Oh, and then I dropped the ice wall to choke him to one because you gotta be rude like that sometimes. Now, Pete can't really do much but go in for a bit of chip damage with the Agumon he has on board, and passing back the turn to me thanks to the effects of ice wall, Shivamon is able to burn a Gaia Force of all things in Pete's security, which means, you know, my job is pretty easy to go in for the final check. Passing back to Pete, he evolves into Growlmon, promotes, and then proceeds to scoop it up because he knows there's not much of a chance of coming back at this point. And boy, let me tell you, I wish things had just stopped there. Game 2 kicks off with a little less fanfare since I now have a pretty good idea of what Pete's going to do. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do about it. I spend a lot of time stack building, and in the race, Pete gets to his Gallantmon X before I can even see a level 6. Uh, this thing is absolutely threatening in a way that Hercules Kabuterimon never was, and I have no answer for it. For my part, I don't see a single level 6, and as a result, I have to come out swinging with Dino Beamon. Naturally, I accomplish very little, Gallantmon kills my dudes, trashes my security, and seeing no obvious route to victory, I actually just decide to scoop it up. And then we rolled onto game three, which was frustrating. Things start out slow, I mean really slow, but then my deck just totally abandons me. I end up getting stuck on level 5, just like I did last game, and every attempt that I make to dig deeper into the deck nets me nothing. Pete, meanwhile, is able to set up an array of tamers, build up into Gallantmon X, and at this point he's just generating so much advantage that he can also casually put 4 bodies on board. So you know, I really have nothing that's going to be able to out that board at all, and when I do finally see a level 6, we're basically at the point of no return, and to add insult to injury, it's Imperial Dramon Fighter Mode, which obviously passes turn when I evolve into it. So, you know, I gotta go for it anyways. I Evo up, and in a nod to what Pete did in game one, I pretty much just scoop right after. And uh, sadly, that's all she wrote. So, yeah, not much on the gameplay front this week. I figured I'd spare you guys the boredom of watching me do nothing for several turns on end while growing progressively more tilted. Trust me, you will thank me later. And uh, yes, it was not one of my finer moments, if I'm being honest. And you know, I, it has to be said, I just got curb stomped. Pete did what I do best. He played a little bit of deck roulette and it worked out way too well for him. Now, granted, this only puts him up to wins to my five, so, you know, I should try to not be all doom and gloom. Uh, it's not like he's going to close the gap that quickly, right? Um, but hey, you know, uh, looking back at the game with more critical eyes, I realized that, if I'm being honest, I kind of lost before it even started. I did lean a little too heavily into the green meme, even if that was the best way to flesh out my level 6 slots, 
And sadly, you know, because of the route I took, I did end up getting stuck on Dino Beamon more often than not, which doesn't really work against Gallantmon because that is a deck that likes to hide in the raising and then come out later to do its shenanigans. So, you know, yes, I didn't see my pieces at all in the last two games, which it sucks, it happens, but my deck was just not built to handle what Pete brought. He made a very, very good, shall we say, meta call, uh, and it paid off well for him. And now it leaves me with some serious thinking to do. I think I might have to drop most of the green package for the time being, or, you know, at least the more of the janky pieces like Grand Kawagamon in favor of just whatever I can manage to pull out of BT-8. Maybe if I can at least get my hands on some armors or another fighter mode, then I can at least stand some chance of winning the game before Pete can come out and just steamroll me with Gallonmon X. I mean, honestly, the, the answer to this, easily enough, is to just open that Ultimate Ancient Dragon starter deck. Imperial Dramon's true power is, it's like right there, but I can't. I can't do it yet. I just can't. I really want to. Every time I think I'm going to do it, I can't. But, you know, that's that's just the way it rolls. Uh, and anyway, that's it for me. Like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I will catch you all in the next one. Take it easy.